We're going to be moving into Babylon now. We'll be reading about Babylon. The first image of Babylon, starting with chapter 17. But before we go there, so we can get a background to understand some things once we get there. In Matthew 13, 31 through 33, <clears throat> we read, He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all the other seeds. This mustard seed is small. It represents Christ. It is death, burial, and resurrection, which a man took and sowed it in his field, in Israel. And this is smaller than all the other seeds. It seemed like such a small thing as the Lord is risen and has these few fishermen and other people that are following him. And this is smaller than the other seeds, but when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants. This is now talking about the kingdom of God. This is now talking about his church. This is about his church, that it started out with him in his death, burial, and resurrection, and move to his few followers. But when it is full grown at the end times, these days that we're in now, it is larger than the garden plants. It's not referring to it as a redwood forest or something, but these mustard trees, these mustard plants could get very big, and they'd be much bigger than the other garden plants and it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. We're going to see later, I'm going to go and show you that these birds of the air are referring to Satan, to demons. This tree grows, and by the time it's full grown, the birds of the air, the devil, can not only come into that tree, rest in that tree, but it nests in that tree. It raises its young. It bears fruit in that tree. And in verse 13, th verse 33, and he spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman, and we're going to keep that in mind, a woman took and hid, hid it in three pecks of meal until it was all leavened. It's showing here, too, that the kingdom of heaven starts out pure. But a woman went and hid a small amount of leaven in it until the whole dough, the whole loaf, the whole kingdom of God is leaven. It's referred to these things by the end times. The kingdom of God has grown so big that the demons, the devil, Satan, nest in its branches and bears young there. And that it, by its end, it is all leaven. And we're going to see here, because now we're going to chapter 17. And there's only one Babylon. In the Old Testament, as God's people were becoming more and more unfaithful and following other gods and not sticking with him like he desired, he allowed Babylon to raise up a kingdom that overtook them and took them away, slaves in Babylon. And they were there for 70 years until by the fall of Babylon, which we're going to have shortly here, by the fall of Babylon, most of them had been born in Babylon. It was the only life they knew. Babylon took them and it also took the treasures from the temple, the precious things, the gold, the silver from Israel. It took all that, including the temple treasures, and it took them to Babylon. And they were there 
until the time of Babylon was over. And Babylon fell very quickly. And we're going to go into the book of Revelations to this end times Babylon. Babylon of the end times. Because Babylon, this world system, this government, and it has one main ruling government over it. And this one system of government that's worldwide has taken over God's people. They grew up in Babylon. They love Babylon. The saints now aren't praying for more and more godliness and more of God. They're praying for the things of the world. That's what they do in Babylon. That's how they carry on in Babylon, wanting, loving the things of the world. They pray for more cars, more money, more houses, more bigger, bigger, that you're never happy. It's so bad they even go to sporting games and pray that their team wins. Pray. The players are praying. Oh, like God has a team that he prefers. Is this as worldly as you can get? Yet this is where the church is. And they're slaves there. And Babylon's here. Chapter 17 and 18, we're going to Babylon and the fall of Babylon. And in Revelation chapter 17, and one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls of wrath, remember, we're still in this new sign, this third sign, the sign of the bowls of wrath, and that the Bowls of wrath are a sign, and we're still in that sign, just like the other signs, the sign of the woman and the sign of the devil, uh, the dragon falling down, included chapter 12 where it was, but also 13 and 14. And now we're in chapter 15 in a new sign, and it's not just that chapter. That includes, of course, chapter 16, and the bowls of wrath, because they are a sign. But it also includes chapter 17 and 18, because they are a sign. There's no Babylon, a country named Babylon, ruling the earth with God's people in slavery right now. We're now in this spiritual realm of the church. And in 17.1, we have these angels, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, we're immediately taken into the wrath of God. We're in that sign. We're in the sign of the wrath of God and the bowls of wrath. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me saying, come here, come here, John. He called him over. I shall show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters so that you know what they're talking about here in chapter 17, verse 15, it says, And the angel, he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples and multitude, multitudes and nations and tongues. So what it's talking about here, and he said, Come here and I'll show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. This is referring to pretty much the worldwide nations and tongues and kingdoms. And verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality, and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. Now, before we move on here, speaking about this immorality, what did the Lord say to the churches? In Revelations 2.14, he said, But I have a few things against you, because you have, there are some who hold the teachings of Balaam, who kept teaching Balak to put stumbling blocks before the sons of Israel. You don't have to wonder what they're talking about there. Good, You don't have to go to the Old Testament, because right there it says, what's the stumbling block? What was he teaching them? to eat things sacrificed to idols, to mix with the world, to mix with the world's religions and thoughts and ways, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and what is it? And to commit acts of immorality. It was a problem for the church. It was a problem that in the beginning that they would start to be 
partaking of this teaching that would allow for immorality. The church is full of it now. There's no difference between the world and the church. The world is doing what the church does, and the church is doing what the world does for such a large part of it. And in verse 15, thus you also have some who in the same way, in the same way, committing these acts of immorality, hold the teachings of the Nicolaitans. Remember, we talked about the Nicolaitans had those teachings of a clerical hierarchy. That's all you have in the church right now. You don't become a part of the body of Christ. You don't function. You go there and there's some hierarchy there. They're your rulers. They're your kings. They do everything. You just go there once or twice a week and you give some money and you think that's church. That's not church. And he also said to the church of Ephesus in 2.6, yet you... Yet this you do have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He told them that they have that for them, that they in Ephesus hated that. The church now loves this. They just live like everyone else lives. And they have this clerical hierarchy who rules over them. God said he hates that. And what do we have here where it says, I'll show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, many nations around the world, with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality. What does that mean? The kings of the earth, these nations. Who is this woman, first of all? We're going to find out very shortly. It's referring to religion. That's what everyone tells you, and they want to tell you it's everybody else's religion. It's referring to religion, but it, we're in the Bible. We're in... The, hear what he's saying to the saints. This is talking about the church. It where it was having these teachings of immorality and these things were going on by the end of the age here. Once it's all grown, it takes over the church. Even what did it say to the church of Thyatira? In chapter two, verse 20, but I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bond servants astray. So they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols, mixing of the religion, mixing of your beliefs, and committing acts of immorality. God's always warning about it. Now in the end times church that it's grown into this big tree that Satan sits in, that Satan rests in, nests in, now the church is full of this immorality. They accept this immorality. And God says he hates that. And in verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth commit acts of immorality. How are the kings of the earth? This is referring to, as we're going to show you very shortly here, the church. The church has grown to a place that it's leaven. The whole thing is leaven. There, God does have his people there, as we're going to see very shortly. But generally, the church is full of leaven. And how are the kings of the earth committing acts with them? Because all of these governments have a relationship with the church, and the church is always having a relationship with the government. Even in Hitler's time, in Nazi times, you can go online and see the top denominational so-called Christian churches and these Nicolaitans, these clerical hierarchists, standing there with the Nazis, giving the Nazi salute. And it's been that way through the history of man. Very few denominational churches stuck up for the Jews. Most of them didn't want to bother Hitler, didn't want to get involved. The churches in Germany and around Germany went with him to a big degree because he had the power. And they have this relationship. You can sit here and see pictures of Putin when he's destroying Ukraine and he's sitting there and right alongside of him are these so-called Christian Nicolaitans with all their fancy robes and everything. The church has become this harlot that's having this relationship with the world, with the world's leaders, the world's rulers. 
And it's that way in America. It's that way around the world. You look and go through church history, and you will find out the atrocities that the church has committed against those who wanted to seek God, who tried to go out and just seek God. The Bibles weren't given readily to the common people because you had to go to the church. You had to go to the Nicolaitans. You had to go to this hierarchy. And they were always, through the history of the church, those top people were always hooked up with the government in power at that time. The government depended on the church and the church depended on the government. And this committing acts of immorality with the kings of the earth, they're having a relationship. In God's kingdom, that is those people working together. They become one. As the Lord said in Mark 10, 8, referring to a man and woman, but when they're having that relationship, he said the two become one. The church has become one with the world governments. And the world governments at the end times are going to be represented in Babylon by the name and the title and the type of Babylon. And so we have this harlot here. There's only one Babylon. So who's this religious harlot that's here? This immoral, loose woman committing acts of adultery, immorality with the kings of the earth. It's the church. It's where the church has ended up. The whole thing became leaven. And going on in verse 2, and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. It's a drunkenness to think the church can live like it does. But God's grace is right there for all of us. It's for me. It's for you. It's for now. We're not perfect people right now. If you come to him and you walk with him and you repent and you call upon his name and there's only very little time left, you're going to walk straight into the presence of God and you're going to be one of those with that anointing, with that power, waiting, watching. That's what he's calling people to, to come to him. Get out of Babylon Get out of this religious Babylon and come to him. And in verse 3, and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. Saints, if you can't see it, if they've taught you wrong, this right here. Verse 3 is chapter 12. Chapter 12, the woman and the beast. Now we're here it says she's sitting on this scarlet beast with blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. And what did we read about the dragon? In Revelation 12, 3, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. This is Satan's work. This is referring to Satan. This is referring to his work upon earth. But what about the woman earlier in verse 3? And he carried me away into the, in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman. What woman's that? The same ear in chapter 12. The woman in chapter 2. I mean, ch chapter 12, verse 2. And she this woman that he saw, let's go to verse 1, and a great sign appeared. Remember, it's a sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. All these quite godly seeming things, but nothing pointing straight to God, not declaring God, not naming him or showing him in glory. It's just the sun, clothed in the sun and the moon under her feet and her head a crown of 12 stars. All these religious, quite Christian things, but not declaring it. And he, and she was with child, and she cried out, being in labor and in pain to give birth. And then let's go to verse 5. Remember, we went through this, and what happened here? Because this is the woman. This is where God's seed has been planted. And they do have these. This woman is about to give birth. This is those rising to heaven where God's seed has been planted and birth has been there. They're born again. They mature. 
and they rise up into heaven. Remember as Satan's falling. And in verse five, and she gave birth to a son, a male child who is to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God in his throne. This is referring to all those, as we said, who are rising up, ascending to heaven. But this is also directly going to the tribulation and before the tribulation. This woman is the church in general. And this birth that she has, this son that rises up to rule and reign with him. It's all through the Bible. We're going to rule and reign with him. And this child is caught up into heaven. One that will rule and reign with him. And it doesn't say she was caught up. The child was caught up. That which was born of God almost always comes and involved in this church that's full of leaven, this tree that's grown and the birds of the air nest in it. And then in verse six, it says, and the woman fled into the wilderness. Here's your dragon. We're going, we're in a new sign and we're going to be connecting it to these two signs. It's the woman. She fled into the wilderness. It's the dragon, the dragon with the seven heads and 10 horns. And this is the woman. It's the only other woman mentioned. And what happened? And the woman fled into the wilderness. And she had a place prepared by God that she might, there she might be nourished for three and a half years. So at the first fruits rapture, that's what you see in verse five. Although it's also referring to all those ascending to heaven. But now in this three and a half years being declared, the first fruits rapture, you have that. That's the, the son caught up to rule and reign with him. And the woman fled into the wilderness and God prepared a place for her and protected her for three and a half years. Remember we said for the first three and a half years, Satan won't be able to attack the church. It's still the church, but it's a worldly ungodly church. Much of it's not his at all. Much of it he has nothing to do with. It's pure dead religion, but he protects it for the first three and a half years. And that is where the latter-day rain is poured out. And that's where the Christians get on fire and turn to God and get dressed and put on the full armor of God and get their wedding grounds ready and get ready for a wedding. So we have here in this sign, the woman, the same woman. I saw a woman who carried me away into the wilderness. He's showing her, John, where this woman went. It's the same woman, and certainly it's the same dragon. And going to verse 4, And the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a gold cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality. She's got this relationship. The church has this relationship, this ungodly relationship in, with the world. Even in America, you see it everywhere. They want to abort babies freely right after birth. The church hardly ever speaks out. They're always there praying at these things, waiting on these people, inviting them to their churches, proud that they go to their churches. So what is going on? The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. What do we have here? These are all signifying, pointing to godly things. Like I told you, when Babylon took Israel slaves. They took all the treasures of Israel and the temple and took it, and it was part of Babylon. Here's the problem, saints. The world has mixed with the church. The church, the two become one. The church has become a part of Babylon, and Babylon has the things of God, the precious stones, the, the heavenly things, the things of value. Babylon has them because the church is one with Babylon. And that's what it's showing here. This woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adored with gold and precious stones and pearls. These are all godly things. But they're in Babylon because the church has married Babylon, has become one with Babylon. The two are one. 
and a gold cup full of the abominations of the unclean things of her immorality. She's not being faithful to God. She's not separated. She's not to love the world or the things of the world. Not only does she love the world and the things of the world, but she's one with the world, and not just the world, but the governments of the world. And in verse 5, and upon her forehead, a name was written. Remember the saints, those rising up to heaven, those raptured, those first fruits. They have his name on their forehead. They have the name of God the, and the, the Father, the Son. They have heavenly names on them. And upon her forehead, this unfaithful church that's a part of the world, a name was written. A mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. This mixing with the world is what got Israel in the Old Testament taken to Babylon. God raised up Babylon, allowed Babylon to take them over. And they were slaves in Babylon. By the end of the time in Babylon, they almost all had grew up in Babylon. It wasn't, they didn't know they were doing wrong. It's the way it was. It's the way it always was. And here's the way the church is now. They are slaves in Babylon. They're committing acts of immorality by loving these governments, loving the world, loving the things of the world, being one with these governments, condoning what these governments do. Even the worst of the governments like Hitler and all the evil things going on in world governments right now, they're always right there with them. And in verse 6, and I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witness of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered greatly. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I shall tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and 10 horns. He says, I'm going to tell you the mystery. This beast is carrying her. The two are one. Look in verse 3, and he carried me away in the wilderness in, in, in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. There two are one. She's riding with him. She's riding on him. And we're going to find out the results of this. This is this immorality that has taken over the church that the apostles were worried about there. This is the Nicolaitans and the clerical hierarchy. This is those two running a monk until the whole thing is leavened. But God, as we saw in verse 12 and chapter 12, he has their seed that he has been planting in there and it has given birth and it has rose up to heaven and it becomes a son who will rule and reign with him. This Babylon of chapter 17, this is not another Babylon. This is Babylon and this is the church which has become one with Babylon, become married to Babylon, as it's had a relationship with, left its dear and close and centered relationship with God, a jealous God. It's taken its eyes off him, and its eyes are firmly, her eyes are firmly on the world and the things of the world. And she slaves in Babylon, and she rides this beast, the two are one, and God's going to have his way about this. God is going to make a change as we see in the next message.